so easy. Sidney Crosby is the NHL's signature player. Crosby went down and got hit up high and uh, shaking his left hand. And for 10 months, he struggled to recover from a concussion. Is he going to be ready by October 6? I have no earthly idea. I mean, we're gonna have, there's, a, there's a process here that we have to go through, and I'm not putting any timelines on it. That's a reality Major Leaguer Brian Roberts understands far too well. A full year since the first of two concussions that have his career on hold. There's some very dark times. Uh, as hard as that is to say. He was foggy. He was dizzy. He was tired. Roberts is improving, just as Crosby is back to skating with his team. But today outside the lines, for some, the unpredictable and lingering effects of concussion. Now, reporting for Outside the Lines, Bob Lee. Sidney Crosby is back skating non-contact roles with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He was with the Penguins yesterday in Vancouver, but still not cleared to return to action. Now, Crosby's hockey limbo, his long recovery is part of a confounding mystery. It's not even clear which hit in early January concussed the NHL superstar. He was playing the best hockey of his career when he was injured. Crosby has a vestibular concussion. It affects perception and balance. These concussions can occur from what appears to the naked eye to be minor contact. The two concussions that are imperiling Brian Roberts' Major League Baseball career did not appear to be like much to the naked eye. Stefania Bell is ESPN's injury analyst and a licensed physical therapist, and she shows us how insidious these after effects can be. For 11 seasons, Baltimore Orioles second baseman Brian Roberts has called Camden Yards home. Roberts, it's a high drive. And I mean deep. Going, going. Roberts, another base hit. Roberts takes off. Wave it bye-bye, Brian Roberts. But things have changed. These days, Roberts is a regular at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. First time I ever had to dodge a cameraman. Where on this particular morning, he goes through some light baseball drills under the watchful eye of his physical therapist. Forgot how tiring singles are. Out since May, he has struggled with post-concussion symptoms that have specifically affected his vestibular system, which dictates how his brain processes motion. Describe what it's like going through this recovery process with this type of injury. Lonely. Um, there's some very dark times, uh, as hard as that is to say. Um, there's some times where these things can take you to really bad places, where you're sitting in a room and you, you don't know what's up and what's down and what's ever going to be normal again and what's not. Roberts actually suffered two concussions within a span of just eight months. The first was in September 2010. Wave and a miss. After striking out, he casually tapped his bat against his helmet in frustration. Within probably two minutes, I knew that something wasn't right. I felt uh, a, a major sense of uncertainty with everything, dizziness. Uh, walking down the dugout felt like I couldn't even walk in a straight line. As difficult as it was for Roberts to believe such a minor act could result in a concussion, it was more troublesome when his symptoms lingered well into the off-season. By November, December, I started to really get scared. I started to worry, you know, what, what was going on? Am I, am I okay? Am I ever going to be okay again? Looking back, in retrospect, I probably had some pretty good signs that things weren't completely healed, but I just kept going. In May, Robert suffered his second concussion, diving headfirst into first base. The impact was pretty hard. I came down, my helmet was out over my face. Um, and I got up, and within a few seconds, 30 seconds, I had a pretty bad headache. I'm standing out there taking my lead, and I'm thinking, I really don't know if he picks over, if he throws over to first base, if I'm going to be able to react to get back. The Orioles placed him on the seven-day disabled list for concussions. Roberts remained with the team, but residual symptoms complicated his plans. I would go out to the dugout for a few innings, and. I couldn't even sit on the bench and follow the ball and watch the game without 
getting a headache and feeling tired and just all those symptoms coming back. That's the goal of today is to really come up with a good systematic plan for him moving forward. So Roberts consulted with Dr. Mickey Collins, director of the University of Pittsburgh Sports Medicine Concussion Program. When I first saw Brian, he had very classic symptoms of someone who was going to have a hard time recovering from concussion. He was foggy. He was dizzy. He was tired. He was having headaches. Five minutes into the conversation, I'm like, this is not going to be easy. If anything, when you're hurt, you at least want to be with your team and support them. And so for me, I just wanted to be there. I just wanted to be on the dugout. I wanted to be supporting them. And yet, finally, Dr. Collins said, you can't go in the dugout anymore. Collins and his medical team identified a vestibular component to Robert's concussion, which often predicts a more difficult recovery. The vestibular system is an intricate network of fibers in the brain that is responsible for balance and determines how people process movement. When I keep my eyes on you but turn my head, am I able to integrate that into a normal, coherent signal? When I keep my head still and move my eyes, same issue. Once they started to explain to me that it meant, you know, your eye movements, your head movements mixed in with your eye movements, um, it all made sense that I'm sitting on the bench just following a ball and I'm having my struggles. If you get a little disruption in that signal to the vestibular system, guess what you feel? You feel dizzy. You feel foggy. When you look down to get a ground ball, when you round first base and look to right field, going to second base. Looking at a fly ball with all those people behind you, that is what the vestibular system does. It allow, allows us to sort of properly incorporate that. The general perception on concussion management is that the best treatment is rest, both physical and cognitive, to allow the brain time to heal. But rest alone may not be the answer. Particularly when the vestibular system is involved, there are rehabilitation strategies that are helping athletes move forward in their recovery. This test really screwed me up the first time. Oof. Roberts has worked closely with physical therapist Ann Muka, coordinator of the vestibular rehab program at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Back to the center. The goal, says Muka, is to help the brain relearn to recognize and process movements as normal. Wonderful. So that those movements no longer cause symptoms. It didn't go from not doing anything to getting on a field and taking 100 swings. I mean, it went from <clears throat> not doing anything to following a pen 10 times back and forth. I mean, that was how slow the progression was. Well, What's been the most difficult part of this experience? Not playing the game of baseball. Wondering what people are thinking. Um, going out and doing things that I've done my whole life, and yet five hours later, ending up on a couch with a screaming headache. But uh, probably the biggest one is not being able to do what I love to do, and that's play the game of baseball. One two pitch popped up behind second base. Aaron Hill going out, joined out oh. there in a collision between Hill and Eckstein. Diamondback second baseman Aaron Hill suffered a similar concussion involving his vestibular system while playing for the Toronto Blue Jays in 2008. Hill also consulted with Dr. Collins for treatment following his injury. Not only did he make a complete recovery, but Hill returned the following season, earning Comeback Player of the Year honors. Recently, Roberts reached out to Hill for encouragement. He's got to stay positive. I think anybody who goes through this, they, they'll go through a period of obviously being sad because you realize that you're away from the game and so many questions will go through your head of, am I going to be okay? Um, you know, am I going to be able to play again? You almost rather have crutches or a cast or something because you're walking around fine. You look very capable of doing everything. What has helped you the most? in getting through this process. Information. And that's, I think that's been the major difference for me this time around as opposed to last winter, was on my dark days and my bad days this year, I knew that I was on my way to something good. So I'm not okay. even moving my head anymore. Roberts has made significant progress since May. His exercises have progressed from simple eye movements to high-level agility drills and baseball activities. But the ultimate goal is a return to baseball, something Roberts won't do until he's symptom-free. 
can Brian Roberts make a full recovery? He will make a full recovery. It's not can he, he will. We're heading right in that direction. I'm very confident that Brian Roberts will play baseball again. The game uh, to me is so special. No matter what level you get to, it's still fun. It's the greatest game there is. And I love playing it and can't wait to play it again soon. <laughs> Vestibular concussions, lingering effects, career-threatening complications. Taylor Twelman knows about all of this all too well. The ESPN soccer <laughs> analyst was a prolific goal scorer in Major League Soccer when the persistent after effects of a concussion forced him to retire as a player a few years ago at the age of 30. Taylor, it's good to have you here. What do you deal with still every day? I've had a three-year headache, Bob. And when you describe it and you hear Brian's voice talk about he, what he misses the most is doing what he loves. I, I miss my life, my normal life. And what he mentioned is very interesting is the fact that he says the little things that I used to do, now I have to lay on the couch five hours later with a screaming headache. Those little things are reading, looking on a computer, listening to music, walking your dogs, going out for a walk where there's a lot of stimuli. It really takes away the normal things of your life that you just and there's no way to get it back as quickly as athletes like us are used to. You recently told me that just in the last few months finally had a dream? Your first dream yeah, since your injury? About, uh, yeah, about three weeks ago I had my first dream since August of uh, 2008 and I know it sounds like the simplest thing but I can't tell you what it meant for my family, for myself to know that because as Robert Cantu will allude to later on, is the fact that that means my brain's healing and I'm doing some right things. So a little thing like a dream, and I don't remember what the dream was because I've had a dream every night since, but <laughs> it was that little thing that, uh, I'll tell you one thing, it, it, brought, it brought a little bit of my life back. But you're able to dream, which is certainly a, a step on the road to recovery, but I understand you're not able to jog, and here you are a pro athlete wanting to work out, you're not able to run. Yeah, I, I can't get my heart rate over 140, and I've really studied throughout the whole process, taking notes throughout the whole time. And right around when I was thinking about coming back, I was going through a lot of those activities that Brian Roberts was talking about, but I couldn't get to where my heart rate could get over 150 for a, a, a significant amount of time. And as you all know, in the sport of soccer, you can't do anything, let alone, you know, go on a walk with your dogs for an hour or so. So. At, at the end of the day, I, right now, I'm really trying to give my brain the best opportunity to heal, and right now, that, that doesn't include working out. I called you the other day to talk about being on the program. You were on the phone. You told me whether he, an NFL player suffering with concussion uh, issues. We saw Brian Roberts reaching out to Aaron Hill. When guys reach out to you, what sort of questions are they asking you? Well, it, it's, it, you're looking for some sort of guidance. I mean, we're talking my concussion last one was August of 2008. There was nothing like this out there. And we're, even though it's September of 2011, there's still the world of unknown for the pro athletes out there. And I think it's the understanding of what do you do with this? And the hardest thing for an athlete, and Stefania talks about rest, but there is something about a rehab for an athlete. When you got a swollen ankle, you rehab everything. You ice it, you stim it, you do whatever you can to get the strength back in that ankle. But it's the opposite for a concussion. If you think you can beat it and the anxiety that comes with the rehab, that makes it worse. Your brain's constantly working. So it's finding a way to let that brain heal. And that's the hardest thing to tell a pro athlete. Now, Taylor, stand by for just a second. We're going to expand our conversation. I'd like to say hello to Dr. Robert Cantu, who is a professor of uh, neurosurgery, a leading concussion researcher. Also, hello to Peter Keating of ESPN the Magazine, who's reporting in the field of concussions has been cutting edge. Dr. Cantu, uh, vestibular concussions, how common are they? Well, Bob, I personally don't like to use the term vestibular concussion. I'd rather use the word concussion with vestibular symptoms. Um, many concussions have difficulty with balance, but it usually clears within 48 hours to 72 hours. And then these individuals with prolonged difficulties with balance, with coordination, uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, uh, some people like to use the word vestibular concussion. It really is meaning that the vestibular part of the brain is not working. But as is in the case of uh, a number of individuals that have been mentioned previously, um, their symptoms are not exclusively vestibular. But those symptoms related to balance and coordination are. 
How common is that? To, to linger at length for months, maybe years? Yeah, I would say roughly in general terms, about 80% of athletes are going to get over their concussion symptoms within seven to 10 days. About 20% are gonna have symptoms that linger longer. Uh, a surprising number of athletes are going to have what's called post-concussion syndrome, which is just simply symptoms lingering more than a month. It comprises currently more than 50% of the athletes that I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, the majority of athletes with post-concussion syndrome are going to have their symptoms clear up within a year, but not everybody. You're hearing Tillman, uh, Taylor tell you that he still has some residual symptoms uh, essentially five years after his concussion. And so each concussion is unique. You can't predict when a given person is going to be over. Peter, Most of fortunately be over in a year, but not yeah. all. Peter, one of the things that you've been reporting on, the way leagues and teams have dealt with it, we've, we've seen the case of Sidney Crosby. I'm going to play you some videotape here, an audio tape. Two very public and very differing opinions out of the Penguins' medical camp, at least medical professionals treating Crosby about his comeback. Give a listen. Right now, I would classify Sid's case as we're in reconditioning mode. In order for Sid to go back to play, he needs to be reconditioned 100% without having symptoms. So let's get him reconditioned and see how he, how he does. At that point, if he can recondition and his symptoms are not there, we will then have a systematic process to, regarding return to play. There's no timelines on this. We cannot predict when that's going to occur. But like I said earlier, I can guarantee you one thing, and that's we're going to make sure this is 100% normal before he goes back to play. Well, he's, he's probably as ready as, as, most, as most hockey players are. He certainly is a different person than when we saw him a few weeks ago, and he he just did not have any sequelae, and I expect that he'll be back in the game pretty uh, pretty darn quick, um, quicker than I think other people would have ever thought. So, Peter, in short order, a pair of PhDs, Mickey Collins, Ted Carrick, each originally accepting invitations to be here today and then saying, explaining they had schedule conflicts, but each saying something very different about Crosby. Well, look, uh, who cares if they're PhDs? I mean, Henry Kissinger has a PhD, and he's smarter than all of us. We're not going to Henry Kissinger for advice on concussions. You want a neuro somebody, a neuropsychologist, a neurosurgeon, a neurologist, to evaluate this uh, in any of these cases uh, using standard protocols and to give you results step by step. And I, I, I mean, I have to tell you, I think what Ted Carrick did was almost obscenely uh, uh, irresponsible. Uh, on September 7th, uh, the Penguins GM, Ray Shiro, and Sid Crosby, and Carrick, and Collins were all together at a press conference. And they laid out uh, what was going on with Crosby's case, which is that he's still not 100%. And then Carrick went on radio and, and said that, backed up by nothing. What, the, what that exchange does, um, because Mickey Collins responded by sending out this volley of information about how qualified he is to make the determination. And what these warring PhDs have done is put this player, who, by the way, is probably the single most important player to his, not just to his franchise, but maybe to the whole league, put this player in the middle of these battling experts. And that's the last thing you want to do is confuse a player in this situation. Dr. Cantu, we've had all this increased scrutiny on protocols for concussions. We know that leagues uh, are generally, especially against the baseline of five or seven years ago, have appeared to make progress. Uh, how much are all the leagues and teams on the same uh, page of the hymnal right now? <laughs> well, I, I don't think all the different teams and all the different leagues are necessarily on the same page, but I think hopefully they're getting closer. I think the National Football League leads by a long shot in terms of better management of concussion. Is it perfect? No. Are the guidelines reasonable? Yes. Uh, is it a good idea to have an outside independent neurologic co consultation with anyone who's had a concussion before they go back? Yes, that's a good idea. Uh, only the National Football League has that. So I think they've taken a more serious approach to it. I think other uh, leagues are playing catch-up. Now, Doctor, we heard, we heard uh, Taylor allude to the unknowns, and uh, I think you and I have talked about this in this topic, the old Donald Rumsfeld, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, what is the great next unknown that you want to know about here in this field of concussion and the impact on anyone, especially athletes? Well, Bob, I think the most important thing is right now is a clinical diagnosis uh, of concussion, and it's a clinical 
um, decision whether one is over a concussion or not. There isn't an absolute blood marker. There's not an absolute imaging study. There isn't an at one test that will tell you whether somebody has it and when they're over it. And I think those are the things that we're looking for to go along with the clinical acumen. Taylor, what do you do right now as far as exercise? What are you able to do and what uh, do your doctors have you doing to, to try and improve? Well, I've gotten to a point where I can walk 18 holes, carry my bag, uh, kind of get away from the real world. And That's you can play golf. good for just my, yeah, I can play golf. But which you can't ironically, try. we talk about my balance and that stuff. I can play golf at a, at a good level. So my balance has definitely returned. I can carry an, you know, eight to, town ba eight to 10 pound bag. What's interesting, and to go back to the Sidney Crosby situation, though, you talk about mild concussions. Why use the term mild? The first time you hear mild, fans, pressure from everyone else on that athlete thinks, oh, it's mild. He's going to be back in four or five days. Well, look at Sidney Crosby. That mild concussion he got in the Winter Classic, he's been out ever since. So that, my, that term mild bothers me. It's got to go because it automatically puts pressure on athletes, and it comes from all areas, whether it's the team physicians, fans, coaches, or your current teammates, puts pressure on you. Yeah. Don't use the word mild anymore. A concussion is a concussion. Peter, in about 20 seconds, the state of uh, the leagues, as Dr. Cantu gave us his perspective, yours, how much advances have been and, and what needs to be addressed next? The NFL is doing everything it can, short of stripping the essence of the game out, sort of, sort of stopping tackling uh, in some creative ways, and I give it a lot of credit. And we'll see the effects of the, this latest round of rules changes. So I think there's been progress there. The NHL has also been making a lot of changes on the fly and now requires anybody suspected of having a concussion to be examined by a doctor in a locker room, but they have to eliminate hits to the head. Don't worry about intent. If you're hit in the head, that should be an illegal act, triggering a penalty, and mm -hmm. they need outside doctors to evaluate these cases, as Dr. Right. Cantu said, an independent neurological professional. Taylor Twelman, Dr. Robert Cantu, Peter Keating, as always, thank you, gentlemen.